Hello and welcome to the First Issue Club. We are your weekly comic book podcast. We're just like Sue Storm. We love a good read. We're here to talk about First Issues. It's in the club's name. We've reviewed this before. If you don't get it at this point. It's in the bylaws. It's on you. You assume full responsibility. That's one of the agreements when you start listening to First Issue Club. Check the show notes. You signed it. There's no, you signed the agreement. There's no liability. We're not holding your hand here. We've had several people flip their cars over while listening to mm. First Issue Club. and We actually had that one person that did. Yes, we did. <laughs> that Unrelated to us. Someone was listening to us while they got into a car wreck. Yeah. It happens. Mm. We're not, are, you sure, are you sure we didn't cause that? <laughs> we're not liable. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, in any case, we're here to talk about some comic book news, talk about the first issues of the week, a great onboarding point yeah. for new and old fans. We will alike. hold your hand at that point. <laughs> Get into this hobby. It's a sick one. Sick. It's so rad. If you want, like, it's pretty peak. A bunch of uh, insight on what you should be reading this year. Not only are we doing like a kind of retrospective of 2024 next week, which will be a really fun episode, mm-hmm. but uh, on our Discord, we're having a lot of kind of year end wrap up conversations. So, yeah. join us over there if you just want a bunch of suggestions on what was good. We've got a lot of rad people with rad good opinions people of high taste just really seem to gravitate towards us don't right, they right <laughs> with the uh, the low taste that we have it is alarming <laughs> that's right <laughs> to paraphrase our once and future leader we have all the best people oh god yeah <laughs> There is I, the people leading are the lowest common denominator. Of yeah, those, yeah, the people that we inspire are the best. <laughs> it's it is interesting to like. I'm excited to record our 2024 retrospective and whatever. But and this is my weekly plea for everyone to go join the Discord. But to see people's suggestions and to see what they've been getting into over the year has really been like kind of fun. Just to see what people have been dabbling in and like uh, what they've been checking out that they wouldn't normally a lot of talk about hoopla which is like the free library app Mm -hmm. which if you don't know about that go google that sounds like a really cool way to get comic books for free Mm -hmm. that doesn't require you to sail the digital seven seas if you know what i mean which we don't condone (laughs) talking about piracy Uh, okay (laughs) oh Oh, there we go got it had to spell it out for you (laughs) but uh yeah seriously go join the discord there's a lot of cool year in lists that people have been submitting that have been fun. There's some books on there that I haven't even n- known and have checked out and have yeah. loved. So, and beyond that, we're also talking about, I mean, everything talk about oh God, Pokemon yeah. pocket TCG game. And we just spun up a, uh, TTRPG channel. Right. We're talking about actually trying to put together a one shot. Yeah. You're talking Discord about maybe people. DMing. Oh yeah. For some uh, Discord folks. Yeah. Our buddy 10K and I have been chatting. We're gonna really? Tr- we're going to try and throw something together. I Holy think. shit. That'll I be think. fun. Yeah. After the holidays. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Yeah. Love it. Don't forget Patreon, too. Patreon.com slash First Issue Club. Go check us out. If you can't get enough. Which you can't. And you want to give us money. We have a free section. But, you but should, if you want to give us money. If you want to give us money, you can. Please also do that. <laughs> Speaking of us getting money. <laughs> <laughs> this show <laughs> is lovingly brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company, specifically the Space Camper IPA family of beers. You don't have to give us that cheese to say Space Camper is our favorite IPA. A delicious family with several fantastic variants and variety packs that pack a fantastic hop punch. Greg is modeling a lovely gift boulevard sent the crew we each got a gorgeous yeti tumbler um with the space camper logo on it which i was looking at earlier and i was like why do i love this logo so much it's an interesting crop like it looks like a hair metal band had a space concept album yes <laughs> yep. yeah. it's like i bought that space lo- camper. i bought that on like an acid wash shirt that they had at the boulevard gift shop Mm -hmm. and it's like one of my favorite t-shirts well mike it's funny you mentioned the boulevard gift shop 
Yeah, that's right. Because from now until the end of the year, uh-huh. go to boulevard.com, find their online shop, and enter the promo code FIC24 mm-hmm. to get 20% off your order. That, that cost us $10,000 to get that promo code. <laughs> yeah. We're not getting any money from the promo code. We just wanted to pass it on to you, our audience members. Yep. Get so some free cool Boulevard swag. Fill those stockings with care. Yeah. Posters, socks, coasters, all their stuff. Pins. Candles. Candles. <laughs> you want a candle that smells like beer? They, they got it. <laughs> it smells good, and it'll keep you warm. You want a barbecue sauce that is made with beer? They have it. They have it. You left so many articles out that you, like, it was like a Russian accent. <laughs> Smell so good. Keep you warm. <laughs> Smell good. Keep warm. You, In Mother Russia, candle you, burn you. <laughs> you burn candle. Um, I sound like Red Guardian. That's it. So th- thank you, uh, Boulevard. We love you. Tastes great. Check out Space Camper Cosmic IPA at your local liquor store. And a little spoiler, Planet Comic Con next year, 2025, Boulevard has already... Approached us for a special little interaction that we're going to be doing at Kansas City Planet Comic Con. So look forward to that. I'm sure we're going to talk about it at nauseum once it gets closer <laughs> to it, Planet Comic Con. It's a kissing booth. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Oh, God. I got excited. You got excited. Almost knocked over the microphone. <laughs> Vargas is eager to kiss every last one of you square I, on the lips. I bought so much stock in chapstick. A lot of chapstick. <laughs> A lot of Dr. Pepper chapstick going right on those lips. <laughs> make one of those like, little turnstile signs. It's like how many people Vargas has kissed. She's just like sitting at one. <laughs> like, who's going to be number two? My wife is standing next to me. And it's just one. Folks, <laughs> come on. Dirty come on. To everyone who yeah, walks by. Holding like a rolling pan. <laughs> I'll bring my son. He'll get a lot of kisses. I have this it's just image of you at the end of the day. With bandages on your lips, just because you've kissed so many people, just like being carted off on a stretcher, just like, I did it for Boulevard! It was for you, Boulevard! (laughs) Yum, yum, give me some down in my tum-tum. Space Camper IPA, Mm -hmm. it's not a beer, it's a journey. A um, comic book news, Uh, I don't have any written down or... Craven has taken the world by storm. Tabulated today, (laughs) but yeah, this is, today is Craven Day. (laughs) I'm craving this movie. In mm. this, the year of our Lord, 2024, Craven has solidified itself as the f- best and last Sony Spider-Verse movie. Yes. Um, and by best, we mean middling. Yeah. We mean Not- middle of the road. <laughs> Not, Not shit. No, it's so bad, it's a, a meme immediately. Yeah. <laughs> no parents in the Amazon. I was really looking forward to the Morbius Madam Web Craven crossover movie. Yeah. They could never get that. it. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. Sony Spider Man universe. We hardly knew you. For, that, for that now. Never, that dot, never, dot, dot, dot. That never had Spider Man show up. By the by, I'm excited to go see Craven. They did that like eight minute preview. <laughs> That which, I was is, like, which is always a good. Sp- I was like, "This is good." I, yeah. I like. I got into it. It was intriguing, but at the same time, it's like they're giving away the first eight, like eight to ten yeah. minutes of the movie away for free. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> what, where do they just like? Come on, guys! It's I like, know we have a terrible track record, but watch this. Look, he stabs a guy in the first eight minutes. <laughs> That's like if McDonald's was just like, "We'll give you the burger for free," uh-huh. right? But and they, maybe that'll entice you to get the fries and uh-huh. drink. They're like, "No, I'm good with the burger." Yeah, <laughs> see ya. See you later. Dude, I want the I want the fries, I want the drink, I want the McFlurry, I want the nuggets. I want the fish filet. <laughs> Give me the whole menu. Huge Craven fan. Um, all right. Beyond that, we haven't seen it yet, so we'll talk about that maybe a little more next week. We uh, felt it. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of like it's ugh. been reverberating. There's a movie theater across the street from us and well, the, the line's been the down lights the road. Are blinded. Yeah. Please <laughs> come in. Please come in. <laughs> Now showing Craven. We'll stop playing Craven. <laughs> um, oh, I was telling Vargas I watched uh, Subservient the other day. It's like the Megan Fox horror movie where she's an AI robot. Oh, I, I had no idea that was. A I thing. don't know. Nerd movie adjacent. Okay, yeah. I liked it all right. Getting terrible reviews. I thought it was like a good thriller. We're kind of in the uh, in the midst of a return of the erotic thriller. Don't you think? Oh. I hate the phrase erotic. You thriller. do? I Why? Hate... She's just like thrillers can sometimes have a little yeah. sex scene in them yeah. without being its own genre. Yeah, the fly. Yeah. That's erotic right. thriller. 
it, truly <laughs> and honestly, like uh, the first uh, Jason movie, erotic thriller. I yep. Uh huh. Sleepaway Camp. I I just hate when movies are like it's a thriller, but there's like four sex scenes. But there's breasts. But <laughs> it's always boobs. Let's yeah. see a little dong. Yeah, hang some brain. Let's look. Let's get a little man juice in there. Next topic. Right. Um, you guys seen any Creature Commandos? Yeah, it's awesome. I'm loving it. I think it's really good. That, Here's The fight scenes are like rad. Yeah. Here's the unique thing about Creature Commandos. Yep. It is a full-on, 100% entry point into James Gunn's DC Universe. Yeah, this is the first James Gunn thing. <laughs> this, this is its Iron Man number one. And I thought it was quite a move to put James Gunn in the opening credits. <laughs> so awesome. It is funny. It's like all these like action scenes with the different characters, and then he kicks back and like wipes his hair and like opens a laptop like he's all cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool dude James Gunn writing a script. Like, well, it's, yeah, not, he... it's not the first time he's shown up in DC animation. Is that right? He showed up as himself in uh, the Harley Quinn show. Uh, that makes sense. Oh, the animated Harley mm-hmm. Quinn show. Okay. Which is also incredible, by the way. Also mm-hmm. on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. No, thank Definitely you. recommend <laughs> Harley Quinn. I still haven't seen that. You of all people on this podcast should watch it. You would love it. Okay. Sounds like there's a lot of foul language and innuendo. Yep. That's okay. pretty much what it is. Perf. I loved uh, B- Boomerang. Man, what kite man? Kite man, kite man. Hell yeah, fuck yeah, kite man. man. <laughs> kite man, yeah. That that show rocked. Yeah, I love like the how they treat like dark side and like the big bads of this like really corny cartoony sort of show. Yeah. Like the tone of it is all fantastic. But um, what are we thinking? I, when I first saw James Gunn in the um, opening credits, I was like, okay, this show's gonna be bad. Like. They're just like, remember James Gunn? He's the, here too. The guy you like, he's <laughs> here, right? Like I thought it seemed like that sort of a move, but the first two episodes are great. Yeah. Or, th- or three maybe? Three the, episodes. I think there's now. three yeah. of yeah. as of now. Okay. Um I so I recently listened to a podcast about uh voice actors mm-hmm. and <clears throat> it talked about how the the art of voice acting has is kind of a dying art um, because a lot of times pe- people will hire just celebrities yeah. instead to play. You want a name on it. You want to sure. put a name on it, right? And I think the thing that really put the point on that to me was David Harbour's Frankenstein because I love David Harbour. Mm-hmm. I think he's a fantastic actor. He's a shitty voice actor. Oh, no. <laughs> like, Frankenstein <laughs> is not voiced well. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's, I guess it's fine and it's serviceable, but like, don't hire, <laughs> don't hire David Harbour to be a voice actor. Right. Because he's not. I had the same stance when they had John Travolta do Bolt, the Pixar movie. The 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 dog movie. Let's throw my Bolt fans out there. <laughs> he's just not believable. <laughs> I make as the on. animated dog. <laughs> All I'm hearing is the guy from Greece. <laughs> All I'm hearing is the guy from Battlefield Earth. <laughs> the dog's like, I don't like you when it's sandy. <laughs> Get me off of the beach. Uh. I'm going to run real fast. I like this bone, but I wish it was grease lightning. Jesus. Scientology. Anyway. <laughs> um, The last episode of Lois and Clark aired. How about that? So this is the uh-huh. first time. That there hasn't been zero DC shows on the CW. Wow, really? Yeah. Yep. That's crazy to think about. The the DC CW verse is officially sunsetted itself. What a what a run! I think salute. Uh, th- those shows were better than they had any business being. Yeah, I would totally agree with. Yeah, that. they. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was a roller coaster of. Of quality of yeah, throughout the years. It was. It was. But uh, good on you for hanging in there. You spurred a whole new fandom of yeah. fans and gave a spotlight to some DC superheroes that don't typically get the spotlight, mm-hmm. like Green Arrow. Doesn't Stargirl had her own Star show. Stargirl? 
Mm-hmm. You know, like a uh, a lot of uh, Flash rogues. Yeah, had a great run on the Flash. Show. What was the team up show that had a bunch of people um, from between the shows? Yeah, League of some. No, it was like oh, uh, oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. I'm mad because it was my favorite one. Was it your favorite? That's yeah. what I was going to ask. What your favorite of the shows was? So you liked that one? They yeah. like traveled through time. It was really fun. They Legends met, like, of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, they met like Jonah Hex and stuff like that. Yeah, like, it, was, it ripped. That show was, it was a blast. Also, like the funniest. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Like of all these shows that took themselves seriously, the spinoff with everybody was kind of the silliest. Mm-hmm. It worked. Um, I think Green Arrow was my favorite. I loved the first two. Oh seasons yeah, I mean. Of that. God, uh, who's who played Oliver Queen? Stephen Amell. God, he's yeah. a smoke show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, st- to this day, just like, God bless. Uh, I think it- Lucifer was probably my favorite. And I know that that, like... Yeah, I forgot that that was a... I don't know if that started on the CW, mm-hmm. but it, cr- it did... It crossed over. It was in the crossover episode. So, it started on HBO, or one of those, and then went to CW. And then it went to Netflix after that? Something like yeah. that was the okay. yeah. I lo- I loved Lucifer, and if you got to pick a more specific one, I think Flash. Yeah. Of the traditional mm-hmm. uh, CW shows, that Flash was my favorite. Do you have a superhero show that got like abandoned? That you're like, man, why couldn't they have done another season of that? Because um, I feel like there's a handful that I thought were good. There was that just, like died on the vine. An Alan Tudyk DC show with Ron Funches. Okay. And Jennifer Hudgens. Oh, this sounds familiar. It was like The Office meets yes. the oh, DC Universe. Yes. Po- powerless? Powerless. Yes. That show was fun. Uh, and it had Abed from yep. Community. In yep. It. And I've seen a few episodes of, a few episodes of that, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought it was great. It got it. Yeah, that got it. It got canned after one season. I pirated the... A pilot of the Wonder Woman TV show that they were going to do, mm-hmm. like in two thousand eight, mm-hmm. it ripped. Really, it was really cool, but it probably cost a fortune, and they couldn't keep up the sustainability of that. Yeah, they did a a a season of like a Hellstrom's show, like a Marvel Hellstrom show. Oh my yep. god, I forgot and about that, that on show. Hulu. That was a Hulu yeah. exclusive, I think, and yeah. that I thought that show ripped. And this maybe like predated some of like superheroes tonally doing what this show is doing Mm -hmm. and maybe now it seems like old hat but i because i haven't gone back and watched it since the first time i saw it but i remember being like wow this is like another level for a superhero show and it came out around the same time legion yeah yeah Yeah, that stuff was so good the Uh, the cloak and dagger show was good i liked that that was fun Mm -hmm. and uh oh the runaways Runaways was amazing yeah Yeah. Yeah. it was was (laughs) so good the velociraptor in that yeah wasn't yeah insanely good the cg was pretty good um though i mean the one that needs the kid the kid in that uh is the young guy in the penguin that's right yeah Mm -hmm. he is oh it took me so long to figure out where I knew him from. Where do I know this fucking face? It's got to be another comic book <laughs> thing. <laughs> the The show that needs another season, though, is Modoc. Yeah. On Hulu. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. stop motion Patton Oswalt. That was really good. Because if Hitmonkey can get a second season, yeah. Modoc needs to have a second season. That Modoc show, I don't think people knew what to do with it. It was so But it was so, so good. funny and structured really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it took people by surprise, and everyone was just like, "Ah, oh, well, I don't know, what to, I don't know what to do with yeah. this. Too, it's, too weird aesthetically for yeah. some it's people." It's so good. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. I think that's the best. That's a great answer. I'll co-sign on that one. Yeah, I can't think of any other that I've seen that. Um... Yeah, <laughs> good Modoc. Modoc one. Wow, that, that's been our segment. Which show would you revive? Turns out it's Modoc. Turns it out it's Modoc. Which hyper specific show would you revive? <laughs> uh, any other comic book news? We've been talking mostly about shows and media. Yes. So EC Comics, just to keep everybody updated uh-huh. with that, because it's kind of my little pet love at the moment. Um, what am I, chopped liver? Well, Crew Universe just ended, which is their sci fi oh, yeah, anthology yeah, yeah. series. Um, I was kind of hoping they'd kick it off for another couple issues like they did with Epitaphs from the Abyss, but they did announce that they're doing Cruel Kingdom, 
mm. which is a revamp of their fantasy series. Oh, okay. So that should be pretty fun. Um, sounds like it's going to be high fantasy with like a kind of a horror, not, I, a, not a total horror twist, but an, an I have edge loved all of the EC anthology stuff that they've been doing. It, it, it's been so genuine and like the stories have been like well thought out and not just like throwaway bullshit. Yeah. It's just been like refreshing yeah. to get an anthology series that knows what it's fucking doing. Yeah, exactly. It was nice to see like there was a little bit of a boom or resurgence of anthology horror. Mm-hmm. And then EC's just like, Hey, remember we like started this. Yeah. <laughs> We like and awoken it, the giant, and it was cool to see them come back and have it like not be like done already. Like people are still extremely interested in picking up a comic that you can read without context of any other issues in the series, and just like enjoy some great writing and great art, telling a quick little um, scary, spooky tale. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping, and I think they will, just based on the success of the first two series. Yeah. Keep it going, you know, give us more sci-fi, give us more, uh, you know, fantasy, you know, like a more, not an ongoing, but mm-hmm. whatever. Something that we know is not going to have a definitive end. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they keep bringing on the talent that they're bringing on for these series, they'll, they'll have no problem doing it. Whatever happened to that Boris Karloff anthology thing? Yeah, I, I backed the Kickstarter and I got the issue. That was and Gold that. Key, Gold right? Key. Gold Key. Nothing else has come out of that. They they released the first two or three issues, and then like, I never Nothing never evaporated. saw anything about it. Bummer. Yeah, super bummer. One of the things that's that is a drag is that everyone gets behind kickstarting a first issue, mm-hmm. and it seems like there's a lot of appetite for something, and then you do just have like, or like seventy eighty percent of the people who back the Kickstarter just like. Dip. I wanted an exclusive first issue, first just for like first appearances sake. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then ah, there wasn't like a big first appearance or anything in it. I'm mm-hmm. out. Well, a lot of the problems specifically with that gold key thing mm-hmm. was it was this yeah Kickstarter thing right to get it up and running, and then the first two issues came out before Kickstarter rewards were delivered. Oh yeah. So it's the berserker feel, effect. People feel yeah. a little burnt sometimes around that. that well, yeah, leaves you have like a bad taste in your mouth but that's kind of like the nature of just throwing your money at something to support it and make it happen yeah but why would i why would i go to the comic shop and buy a book that i know is in the mail yeah when you know what i mean like why would i do why would i buy issue two Mm -hmm. i haven't Uh, read issue one i haven't read issue one and it's in the mail yeah you know it's it's just bad planning that is yeah that's tough and and there are things they could have done i think to ease that like Hey everybody! I know issue two's in the store, and issue one hasn't been delivered. Here's a digital copy of issue two, mm-hmm. hoping that you'll go support issue three, right? Yeah. Like, let people be caught up with you, yeah, so they can be excited to go to the store and give you more money. <clears throat> you know, so speaking of like digital comics and kind of like, I always feel like ugh when I spend like seven eight dollars on a digital comic and I don't have any thing other than access to a file online (laughs) it's like not even like i actually like own it digitally it's just like there's a link that like works if you remember your login um and distillery lately has been doing this thing where if you buy their uh one of their exclusive like member covers and add the digital copy to your cart you'll get the digital copy for free so, because their books come with a pretty substantial cover price of like eight, nine dollars, yeah. and so you're basically buying like a fifteen dollar incentive cover, and then getting the digital version, for nine dollar digital yeah. copy for free. So it's like I kind of feel like I just like upgraded six bucks, and I actually get to like hold mm-hmm. something and show that I was there at the beginning, and I'm I'm into it. Like yeah. I I like that. I think we've talked positives and negatives about distillery throughout the course of their tenure in comics Mm -hmm. and there are certain things that i think are getting better there which is a good omen with the amount of talent they still have and and the level of 
good stuff that's coming from distillery is that they are refining the the product a little more and kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't. I'm glad that they've like embraced the growing pains of like yeah. finding their identity mm-hmm. because they could have gone the bad idea route and just leaned into the lunacy. Yeah. yeah. But they just I think they recognized that the audience you know, response to some of the quirkiness that they were trying to do was just like, we don't need that. We yeah. want, we want, you have such a talent pool you're working with, with distillery. I don't know why there was like such barriers in the beginning of like mm-hmm. getting the book or like getting access to the book where it should be just like an open gate policy of like, yeah. here's the book. Here's what you need to get. Mm-hmm. Like prices are this, just make it more streamlined and, and, Less complicated for people to get your yeah. book. The place I order comics from straight up stopped carrying uh, any yeah, any, mag- any magazines. They're just like <laughs> a pain in the ass to ship. Yeah. yeah, like they always get banged up. Yeah. They feel, were yeah, they were I just like it. fuck it. We're having to like spend too much time refunding people and getting this like a whole new different Gemini mailer to shove in a box <laughs> inside of another box. Yeah. Just because someone ordered one oversized comic, yeah. Like, As I mentioned, com- bags and boards com- and all that. Yeah, completely changes like the dynamics of like the normal little tidy thing you can fit normal comic box comic books in. Mm. It's just like throw it out the window and buy like a whole nother set of things because someone got one magazine size book. So yeah. Yeah. I I get that from a like a retailer perspective why these books are kind of frustrating too but i do absolutely love the format when you get them in your hand and you see them in person yeah like the experience is so much better than um a normie a, a, like the digital experience especially oh yeah way better than digital yeah. the um well i'll, I'll get to it because i read the world beneath her feet is i think the name of it yeah i did too um and the new Tinian and Charitier, I think is how you say her name, mm-hmm. um, comic. And I think Jordi Belair did yep. the colors. Mm-hmm. The colors are un. That book was real. Awesome. We'll get into it, but that book yeah. ripped. The colors are so fucking good in it. Jordi Belair is the best colorist working. I would agree. Eisner award winning <laughs> Jordi Belair. I mean, the, the Eisners for coloring should be like Jordi Belair, Jordi Belair and Belair also yeah. like. <laughs> I think they've won it. Maybe three years in a row. I mean, it's like them or Clayton Cowles, right? Unless like, like Dave Stewart or Mike Spicer did yeah. something. <laughs> like it's. But even then, like Dave Stewart. Okay, w- are you working with who? Frank Miller or uh, Jim Mike, Lee? Like Mike Magnola. Mike Magnola. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> you've got talent attached, but yeah, Jordy Belair, man. The breadth of work in a single year that you get from Jordy Belair. Yeah. And the creativity and the coloring is just like. No, no one's like it. It makes like that. I, I really think this book in particular, like, I, I, obviously it was a good book already, mm-hmm. but it took it to like another stratosphere. And it's not often you can say that about like the colorist on a comic. Should we just get into comics? Yeah, are let's we, do are it. We done Sorry. With news? Let's just get into comics. Let's talk about this book just because we're already talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, the is, world beneath her feet. Is it the city beneath her feet or the world? Let's find out. You help me out with this. The comic book beneath our feet. But James Tinian, ever heard of him? Tinian. <laughs> Tiny um, Onion. Mr. Tiny, Tiny Onion. Mr. Tiny Onion. The City Beneath Her Feet. The City Beneath Her Feet. It was co-written by someone, too. And then... I just see writer James Tinian, artist Elsa Chartier, colorist Jordi Belair. There's a Elsa... Original, right up, right up there, up there on my shelf, could be a character from this book. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, we don't even know. <laughs> I think that's the ga- supposed to be the gal from Love Everlasting. Ah, makes sense. Um, what is your thought on this book? I've I have a weird take on it. Okay, I think I might have had a a harder time with this book, mm-hmm. but since I'd read. And remembered the entry in Devil's Cut. Mm-hmm. I think that like elevated this comic. That like I was already thought of the girl in the leopard print jacket mm-hmm. as like a James Bond type. Mm-hmm. So I went into the book like understanding that she was like a woman of the world who was like adventuring. Yeah, and 
that one of the most interesting things about this book um, was that she, you kind of start at one expecting her to be your POV character because, right. be, because of the devil's cut and the first like three pages, three or four pages, maybe 10 yeah. pages of this comic are like all her. And then your POV character completely changes and you realize like it may never go back to this other character that like, yeah, the we hard shift the book there was based really. On. I was just like, "Oh, is she? Is this like a, a hallucination?" Yeah. And there's there's opportunity to do some interesting things. I think with what's real and what's fake in this world, because this James Bond esque character that we're talking about um, gets in a relationship with a woman who's a struggling author, mm-hmm. and she writes a book about their relationship. That's kind of a like a fictionalized version of their relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, in order to protect this person's identity, if they're like some sort of James Bond type, mm-hmm. um, and it leaves the door open for you to be like, is this part of the work of fiction that we're right, seeing? Right. Is this like um, reality? Like yeah, you like don't know split personality, kind of like getting lost in your work. Is there like you know some kind of like mm-hmm. She's lost the thread of fiction and reality because she's a she's dove into this character so much that she's yeah we and we don't know it never explicitly states that like hey you're maybe in the story or like maybe you're in the real world mm-hmm. but what we do know is that our new POV character that we kind of get access to for the second half of the book mm-hmm. um, is kind of like infatuated with this person and. Oh, they have yeah. they have this like really interesting different relationship that they're both kind of like <laughs> Oh, it's pretty toxic. <laughs> they're they're like but they're both kind of like okay, if if this is the way we get to be together, mm-hmm. then we just like have to be okay with that. Like maybe well... maybe we were meant to be together, but well that's the thing they're like battling with in this right. comic, right? If maybe we were meant to be together and there's this life we could have had, but because of these circumstances, mm-hmm. there's no way for us to have or live that life Mm. so we're like we both kind of have to set our expectations and get what we can out of it okay don't you feel like that's kind of like the crux this builds towards i what i got from the story was and aren't these the good books when you can take different things away yeah like i may have seen this book in a completely different light (laughs) than my good friend mike d has seen it i felt like the girl in the leopard jacket had the reins of the relationship. She was the wrecking ball. She was she, in control. She could come and go as she wanted. Yep. And our POV character is just kind of left there, waiting for her to return. She's pining over this woman, walking by their old haunts, going by her old block to make sure that she comes back and she gets to see her again. That, to me, is the definition of a toxic relationship. You don't have any communication between the characters of what the relationship is, you clearly know that this one, the James Bond character is in control. She enters the relationship when she has the time. It's not up to the other woman, right? Yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. But what I, where I think this is different than what like you typically think of when you say a toxic relationship mm-hmm. is I think that they're both like very much in love with each other and hold each other in very high regard. There and is some of like affection and mutual uh, emotional attachment there. I, I will agree. Yeah. And, and I do think it's like a, the, the way it was set up to me really seemed like this was an unfortunate circumstance, almost how like Spider-Man mm-hmm. can't be with Mary Jane. Sure. Because, you, if you're an assassin or a superhero or yeah, whatever, no attachments. whatever it is, you're putting the person you're in love with in danger, and there's only so much you can give of yourself because of your other mm-hmm. responsibilities or how safe it is to interact with this other person. Yeah, and so I like to me the book was kind of saying, "Hey, I found my person, but unfortunately." Like life has put me in a situation where it's like not safe to have a person. Here's here's why I will agree and disagree. I believe one person believes that they had found their person. Mm-hmm. I believe the other person believes they had found a person. A person, sure. 
they yeah. found a landing pad. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a part in the book where our James Bond character reads the book that the POV has written. Yeah. And she confronts it a little bit of just like, you know, I read your book and there's this part where your character gets really sad because I leave. Mm-hmm. And she was like, well, yeah, because I do. I, I want you to stay. And that's where the big rift comes of just like, you know, I can't stay. Like, you know that this can never be. I, t- I told you that. Like, and that's where I feel like there's this disconnect of just like, yeah. I, we can't ever have a relationship. I kind of. But Why I, are you sad? But I kind are you of, seeing someone? I kind of read this as in like. <laughs> I feel like we're, we're going, in couples therapy right now. We're going right back now. and forth. Yeah. I kind of read the nuance of that situation as in like, oh, now I realize I'm actually like hurting you. Like, that, okay, yeah, that true. I thought yeah. I thought we were on the same page about like, mm-hmm. hey, we have this love for each other in this unique circumstance, and we're both, mm-hmm. we've both come to terms with what it is and what it can be, and then you realize that, oh, I'm I'm affecting this person more than yeah I I thought I was, and it's easy for me to like live my exciting life and mm-hmm. pop in and pop out. But now that I realize I'm hurting you, I'm gonna like really separate myself from the situation because it like hurts me to hurt you. And I think that we get like a a little bit of confirmation in that in the way the book ends, which I don't know if we want to spoil Ooh, that. No, no spoilies, no spoilies. No spoilies. Because this is a great book. Yeah. This is a book that's like a um a long lasting slow burn. Yeah. We're gonna get more and more from the story because the way it ends is kind of blast the door. It's supposed to be these uh, d- two. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I was know. about to say. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, aren't normal the distillery books like three issues? They're normally three or four okay. issues. Which seems wow. They're like built to be, like oversized, tr- like graphic yeah. novels, yeah. basically. So they kind of fit this like affordable format, and if they go beyond four books, then it's like it yeah. no longer fits that yeah. format and model. We, and we should also say that this lead character who's writing the book is talking directly to us. Yes, she's us talking the to the reader. Yeah. Right. Not just me specifically. Not, she's not talking to Greg Lichtai. She's talking to anyone who's reading the book. Vargas, we got to get Greg some help. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you, don't all the characters talk to you when you read the books? This um, this sounds like it's a little bit out of the box for Tinian. It just based is, on what you guys are talking about. It is a r- romantic queer book, which he's done before. Sure, but the I've never seen him do a spy. Kind of yeah, like sounds like an action mystery kind of thing. It's way like even though that's a part of it, mm-hmm. it's way more based in reality than any of his mm-hmm. other comics have yeah. really been. Mm-hmm. I guess like you could say the Deviant is the, the Deviant's close takes, takes place in a world wherein it's it's real but it's it's so the deviant is so genre yeah and this horror is an old hat for him yeah this feels way more slice of life doesn't it like the james bond stuff feels like secondary background part of this there is a giant nun (laughs) that character design fucking rocks yeah like giant nun in snm rope Motif. Liv or Viv. It has like a short, like three letter name yeah. or something. That character is rad. Seen maybe three different times and never seen again. Sure. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm just like, oh, that's <laughs> that, that seems out of place. But it's going to be fun seeing what happens because the ending was kind of cool. Yeah. But then, like, we're just like, well, where, where, do, we, where do we go from here? Are we going to explore more relationships or does this giant nun come back? Please, God, give me the giant nun. Well, and are we lied to in the way that ending? Yeah, and is, is this all like, a ruse? Is yeah. this all like a, a fictional story that she's been mm-hmm. writing? Because there's a moment where I'm thinking you might be right, Mike D, about she goes to this old shitty bar, and she was talking to the bartender about how boring she is. And the I was like all of it in her imagination. Yeah, and yeah. The, the bartender goes, just make something up then. Yeah. And then that's where the scene ends, and you're just like, Oh, wait a minute. And then her life gets interesting from there. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. That's true. I didn't think about that. Something to consider. Yeah. James Tunyon, you've done it again. You sly bastard. You've done it again. <laughs> you son of a bitch. It was really good. 
It was. It was. I, I really liked it. It was really, really good. The, and again, art, top notch. I love Elsa. Elsa from uh, Love Everlasting, mm-hmm. and again, like colors are just unfucking real in in this comic. They're like the star of the show. Yeah, it was pretty pretty wild. Yeah. All right. I read In Bloom from Boom Studios, written by Michael W. Conrad and art by John J. Pearson. Um, this book was gross. <laughs> Good gross or bad gross? Good gross. Like Hell yeah. body horror gross. Uh, I in, heard the title In Bloom and I was like, please be for me. Please be for me. <laughs> in Bloom is set in our Earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we are beginning to elevate and evolve. The plant yes. life or the fauna is doing its best to protect the earth. So it's the our gut bacteria uh-huh. Uh-huh. is is blossoming. Yes, and so when it does that, it elevates our minds, uh-huh. changes our uh, features. Uh-huh. We become uh-huh. more fungi like. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now there's a killer amongst us, uh-huh. killing the fungi people. Hell yeah! So now a detective who wears a mask so he doesn't catch the fungus stuff uh-huh. is trying to figure out who this masked killer is. Yeah, he is working hand in hand with another person on his unit who has bloomed, and like there's no there's no friction between bloomed and non bloomed people. In fact, it is seen as a good thing to bloom. Sure. Uh, we get an opening scene where these I kids want to bloom. Exactly. We see these kids meet a guy uh, because like their basketball rolls into his yard or whatever, and they're just like, "Oh, cool, he's bloomed!" And everyone's just like, "I can't wait till I bloom." So this is seen as like a good. It's like a higher state of mm-hmm. evolution. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's like a Cronenberg meets uh, like detective procedural. Which is sounds like a perfect combination for yeah. everyone here at the table. Um, Michael Conrad is great. I think did he do Vicious Circle? That no, we that did, was uh... Lieber Mayo. Oh, anyway, well, it reminded me of that kind of realm of yeah. of, of cool storytelling. But um, this seems like a kind of a out of uh, left field choice for this type of holiday season we're entering like mm-hmm. i don't this should have maybe been around october mm-hmm. around the spookier seasons but it was great like the, it, i love this kind of like conversation of people wanting to evolve more and like the earth responding to what we're doing to it of just like okay well now we're just like activating everything to like save not only ourselves with the planet that we live on I thought but that was kind of cool. Did I miss a part of this? There's like a crime story that's happening in the background. Yeah, so uh, random uh, bloomed people have been showing up dead. Okay. And, the, and the thing that's unusual about that is when the bloom the blooming started, uh-huh. um, war stopped, crime went down. Like people have like risen above the thought of violence. Yeah, like it's kind of like been extinguished we're star trekking we're star trekking yeah yes we we, no there's no use for money (laughs) no use for money yeah our food comes from lasers (laughs) uh i i so it's like the violence is just so unheard of it's out of place yeah that you're just like something's amiss because like i mean i'm sure like petty theft still happens Uh and, and you know Disagreements, mm-hmm. sure, but like the act of murder and and violence has ended because like uh, we, you said, this is kind of set in our world. It is our world. It's, it is Earth. It is planet Earth. It is planet Earth. So there's no flying so cars. So people are after your copper pipes and things like, in this. Yes, universe. and there's still scammers. Yeah. calling your grandma yeah, saying so that's what I was trying to get to the bottom of. Listen, we're the post office. Your thing, your package is caught yeah. in our warehouse. Please click this freaky link that we've attached to the text, so that we can get your package that you don't remember ordering. Stuck in customs. <laughs> That's one whole issue of this: is someone <laughs> falls <laughs> falls for a custom scam in because they haven't bloomed. <laughs> they got they got bamboozled because they didn't bloom. 
That sounds dope. Yeah, it was very right, cool. Twilight Zone meets, yeah. um, I don't know, Kojak. It, it sounds like it has shades. <laughs> it has shades of the beauty, the Jeremy Hahn. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Are they still gonna make that a movie? God, I hope so. They yeah. might. And then lastly, I read Batman Dark Patterns by yeah, Dan Waters and Hayden Sherman. Fucking dynamic. Hell yeah. Insanely good. Insanely good. Batman is hunting down a serial killer mm-hmm. that um, inflicts pain with needles, but they've been studying like medieval torture methods. Batman in the first issue meets this guy, and he has the guy. Oh, come on. Okay, this is really gross. The serial killer he's hunting down has swords and needles and nails in his body, like millimeters away from every kill point in his body. So Batman can't hit him because uh-huh. it would kill, him. would kill him. However, he can hit Batman only once. Sure. Because he just gives Batman a hug and then Batman dies. <laughs> no. Because he's got swords and stuff all over him. The swords are in him. I or po- Okay. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> um, so this, it's it's a... I loved it a lot because it was a thing of just like you usually see Batman fight these rogue villains and they're outlandish and cartoony. And this guy is like, he's has nails in his throat and swords. And I'm like, yeah. that's not really a normal thing to happen, but it is, it's weirdly grounded yeah. of just like, there's just a serial killer out there. Like some fucked up dudes just killing people left and right. And Batman has to work with, um, Gordon and this new mortician that is like really just creepy. Uh-huh. Like, is like really, well, he works at Gotham U and like is really involved in like, uh, pathology and like the the mind of a serial killer. And Batman's like, get him the fuck out of here. This guy's a fucking weirdo. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Commissioner Gordon's just like, fucking ease up, Batman. <laughs> like. We need him. Like, you... I need him down here with me while you fucking fly off and do your bad yeah. shit. So he's not leaving. And then we get these, like, moments where... And this book really highlights the fact that I don't know if Batman would be as successful in what he does if he didn't have Alfred. Oh, sure. Like, in this book, we have Alfred tending to Batman's wounds because Batman is... he. Uh, sewing himself up incorrectly mm-hmm. like he's doing it and and alfred's just like you know there's a shell casing still in you right and batman's like oh, fine you can do it and alfred is talking him through his process of why he thinks this particular serial killer will strike here and here next and it's just like to have that mentorship and that like superior brain power with you at all times to like backboard off ideas is like kind of vital to why Batman is really as successful as he is. Alfred's the real MVP. I thought that was one of the strongest points of the Batman, the Mm -hmm. movie Mm -hmm. was Andy Serkis's Alfred was like almost better than Batman. Right. Like I do think that there's something to like, it's not interesting when Batman is just like beyond so beyond Sherlock Holmes, right? That he's immediately just like, I could tell by the way you twitched that you killed somebody five days ago, and I can tell it's five days ago because of like the must on you and blah blah blah. Yeah, it's like he's a little too intelligent in a lot of the mainline. He's OP, baby. Books, but yeah, he's OP <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but I I like other else world stuff like this that kind of brings him a little back down to earth, and he has to lean on people. Mm. Um, he's a much more interesting character. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I highly suggest if this book, if you're a a Batman fan, and mm-hmm. B like seeing Batman have to solve crimes like an actual detective. Yeah. You need to find evidence. You need to go get clues. Like it's a lot easier to fight Two Face when he's driving through fucking Gotham mm-hmm. in an ice cream truck shooting people. Like. Yeah. This is like this this criminal doesn't want to be found and he's very good at not being found and hurting Batman. Yep. So it's it was a really unique story. You don't have to be super ingrained into like Justice League and all this stuff to no. follow this comic, which no. is and which is great. Yeah. Batman flourishes when he's a detective. Yeah. 
His peace has been said. Yeah. Or I'm were stepping the, away from Were those life. all your books? Yes. Can I do a quick uh, shout out real quick? Yeah. None of us have the chance to read Laura Kinney Wolverine. Oh, yeah. Oh, which right. is by... Uh, she's, she's a friend of a friend of the podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just wanted to say I saw it's getting like killer reviews and we love Erica Schultz's work, so yeah, we'll read it at some point. But yeah, it's on my list. Shout out to shout out to her and to the her, geekery, her and, and the geekery, and and check that book out. That's Do you want to go? That's all I have. Oh, okay. Uh, I read a couple, and I know some of these are a couple weeks old. I think, but mm-hmm. I we'll allow it. I didn't make it to the shop, and I haven't talked about them yet. This so. is the holiday season. Uh, so I think do. My pick of the week is West Coast Avengers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's by Jerry Duggan, and I don't remember the artist. Kim is their last. Name. Does it keep the lighthearted nature that West Coast Avengers typically does? Yes, <sighs> yes, um, yes, baby. Win. I told Mike Oosh. D before Greg got here that he needs to read this book because it's totally right up his alley. Um, they obviously Iron Man and Rhodey are revamping the West coast Avengers, but they give it kind of a Thunderbolts twist where they're trying to take heroes with rap sheets or kind of lesser villains. (laughs) Heroes with rap sheets, (laughs) heroes with a rap sheet, West coast Avengers. (laughs) Uh, but they're trying to like rehabilitate these, these heroes with rap sheets or, or villains. Right. Yeah. So the big draw of the book is that Ultron is, one of the the main uh, yeah. members, Ultron, maybe one of my favorite villains. You're gonna want to read this book of all time. You're gonna want to read this book, okay? Um, because Ultron is apparently truly trying to change his ways. He really wants to be a hero. Oh, we got a malware uh, update. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He called. He installed CrowdStrike, so now <laughs> he's totally fine, except when he blue screens. My it. Chrome was corrupted. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. folks. He met Norton. He, yeah, that's right. I got rid of McAfee. It's all good. Um, but there's well, a, didn't one of those guys turn out to be like a murderer? McAfee. McAfee. It was McAfee. Yeah, yeah, he like lives in Panama now. God. Oh, he still he didn't he can't be extradited. I don't think so. Hell I mean, yeah. he's got he's got enough money. <laughs> Yo, McAfee, what's up? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the show. Uh, but there's a big twist at the end of this book where um, I won't give away any specifics, but Ultron is doing the wrong thing for the right reasons. He's saving people in a way that is horrifying and terrible. Um, and it's going to be, I think the impetus at least for this first arc of this book. Um, Mm. and it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy what, what he's got going on. So Ultron. Yeah. Um, very excited about it. (laughs) He starts his own improv. (laughs) Yeah. Out on the West coast. Uh, he starts his own crypto. Oh God! <laughs> Alt- altcoin. Uh, did we? Oh, quick crypto side thing. Have you heard about what's going on with with Hoktua? Hoktua coin. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? I lost eight thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I bought Hoktua when I saw my portfolio. I saw a clip of her or her PR person trying to talk their way out of it, and it was like, man, not going well. If if you don't have an answer, sometimes it's best to just hang up the phone. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, I also read All New Venom. Oh, yeah, we didn't get to that last week. We didn't. Um, this is obviously Al Ewing continuing on his Venom run. This is a mystery character. We do not know who the current host of Venom is. Ooh. Um, Any guesses? I've heard some rumors. Yeah, I well, it's not Eddie Brock. It's not Dylan Brock. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the dog. A lot of people are <laughs> guessing Rick Jones. I'm Rick Jones. He is in this book. Not a host of Venom. He's one of the suspects. Oh, okay. Ooh. They suspect that he might be Got one, of, one of the hosts Howard of Howard the Duck? Could be. We don't know. Um, but it's cool. It's cool to see a... <laughs> superhero book that is kind of a uh, pissed would people be <laughs> Howard the Venom you know what would make people the most mad if it was uh Paul from Amazing Spider-Man who's like dating Mary Jane oh yeah everyone fucking hates that character <laughs> no it's uh 
Yeah, Franklin Richards. He's Spider- not a mutant yeah, or uh-huh. Spider Man at any rooms is like, no, nah, we're fucking leaning into this. <laughs> yeah, Franklin Richards. He's, he's, a mutant. he's been like everything in the Marvel he, universe at some point. And it has this Herald crank. of Galactus. Yeah. Harry Osborn. Uh-huh. Uh but it, it's it's cool because the the framing device is like, who is this new venom? Um and it's kind of a detective story. <laughs> Who's that a, venom? Who, that's pretty much what it is. It's Pikachu. <laughs> Um, so it's, and it's Al Ewing, so you know it's going to be good. Yeah. So. <laughs> Anyone have a favorite Venom? Uh, Agent Venom. Oh, Flash you Gordon. My... Dude, Agent Venom was amazing. Rick Remender uh, and Colin Bunn eventually picked that up. Yeah. That run is peak. That is a really good answer. I think, especially at the time, I was co- signed, kind of sick of Eddie Brock's whole shtick. Mm-hmm. And to see a Venom that was just like a good guy doing yeah. cool stuff as Venom. Armor looked sick as fuck. Armor was really cool. Yeah. I just liked the whole arc. Did you ever read a Space Agent Venom? Uh, Venom Space Knight? Yes. Yes. Maybe one of the best stories and I've maybe ever read of Venom. It gets so overlooked. It, it truly does. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Space Knight's awesome. Um, Is your Venom talk? Venom Boys. Uh, I also read Dead Samurai, which is an indie book out on Wake Entertainment. I think I pre-ordered this. Never heard of it before, mm. but they got a Bill Sienkiewicz cover. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me pull up the creative team because it's all too... Am I right in this that it's kind of shiny? Yes. It's a it's a cardstock foil cover. It is six ninety nine. but Welcome there's no whatnot. $5 bidding here on the... First issue club YouTube. John Dole, Dole Matt, Dole Mayan is the writer mm. and Ryan Benjamin is the artist. Um, so this is this cover's sick. Yeah, well it's, it's Sankovich. Um Okay, well I've seen some Sankovich that hasn't been that great. <laughs> no, you haven't. That's true. I have not. <laughs> uh this is Dawn of the Dead by way of Lone Wolf and Cub. Go on. So it's I mean, it's great a, first great pitch. Yeah, Keep, continue. I, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. There's a, a the the you know the, the emperor's bodyguard mm-hmm. is our main character, and it, during the middle of a zombie attack, everybody dies. So he's ready to commit seppuku because he's mm-hmm. failed to protect his lord, uh, but then realizes that the the one daughter lived through the attack. Course. So he's got to get her to safety yep. through the middle of this zombie attack in feudal Japan. They're gonna fall in love. Who knows? I mean, she's kind of young, so never mind. Maybe they, maybe they don't. But who won't go there? <laughs> I Is mean, she like a Grogu character. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's more of a Grogu. <laughs> Mandalorian Grogu relationship. I love that I went exactly with Lone Wolf and Cub, and Greg's like, oh, you mean like Baby Yoda? Yeah, well, it's basically Lone Cub. And- <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, especially from a publisher I've never heard of what's the What's the art like? Give me a taste. What's the art like? Like, c- compare it to someone that I may know. I don't know that I can't. I mean, it's fairly... Okay. I won't say. I'm gonna flip through it. Unimpressive is not the right word. It's not distinct. That's yeah. that's. Okay. I I wouldn't say that it's like in the style of someone. It looks like a house style that yeah. you would see from a, a Marvel or DC book. Yes. It's good. I mean, the action sequences are very very good for what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a lot of large panels. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of different. Yeah. Yeah, especially for an indie book. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's not like oh, oh it's news. not you can a, get a rip dead off samurai t shirt. Yeah, the, and there's an ad for merch for this one series in the back of the book. I thought that was weird. Don't love that. <laughs> but there's no <laughs> other ads say, in the rest of the. You're book. gonna buy the first issue and be like, I need a t shirt. I need some fucking <laughs> boxer shorts of this now, right now. <laughs> This is my new identity, this thing I just read. If you know nothing about me, just know this. I live and breathe dead samurai. Hey, how many people did that with fucking distillery, though? Spent $100 on that hoodie or whatever. Listen, we ragged on them, too. Yeah. (laughs) No one is impervious. I will say this, and I kind of fell for it, that they were like, 
hey, if you see us at a con and you're wearing one of these pieces of apparel, you might get something special. And <laughs> we didn't know it was just a high five. <laughs> so I wore one of the shirts and went to like my next con with a bunch of like distillery people. Mm-hmm. And they were like, I was like, oh, I'm wearing my distillery shirt. Do you guys do anything for it? And they were like, no. Oh, like, and I was like, okay, that's embarrassing. Uh. The email like was like very explicitly like you'll get something cool. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Stop trying to like, make fetch happen. So you got my like thirty five dollars for a t shirt, and it's just uh, at like, least it was only thirty five. Complete lie. I was <laughs> about everyone working in the booth was just like, ah, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, those hoodies were like a hundred. Yeah, I was gonna say, didn't they have like a two hundred dollar oh, hoodie? Yeah. Rough. Yeah. Yeah. Rough. Mm-hmm. That's rough. Sorry, Mike D. Before a book even came out. I didn't mean to slam you unknowingly. <laughs> but I mean, I will say, all of my favorite creators under one publisher. Sure. I'm going to wear a t-shirt for that. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. That's well, why don't I, knock me for wearing my dead samurai shirt yeah, that's in the mail. Uh, well, don't knock me when I wear my Xenoscope hat. My Dr. Seuss <laughs> Xenoscope Can we buy hat? Xenoscope stuff? That's I might need to get on this. <laughs> oh, I want to... I want a top cow shirt. Yeah, we're all gonna get American mythology shirts. <laughs> uh, and the last book I read this week was Scout Comics that we talked about last week. <laughs> uh, I read Kerpow, and this was an interesting one. Um, it's about a kid who witnesses his dad murder this universe's version of Batman. That's like the opening panel of the book. Okay. Um, and the Robin survives. Mm -hmm. Uh, we fast forward, whatever it is, 10 or 15 years later. And the dad is Kingpin. He's the, the crime Lord of New York city kids in college. And he is like kind of haunted by images of this Robin character. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he sees him and they interact. Mm -hmm. Um, and then at the end of the book, there's this this motherfucker doesn't read comics <laughs> we're looking at his guys oh, modeling a xenoscope hoodie a 60 dollars <laughs> xenoscope hoodie he's just trying to make a buck man <laughs> he says i'll wear whatever hoodie yeah, you want right <laughs> you know a lot of times with models like this they just green screen them yeah they photoshop yeah. stuff on yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, god only knows what other hoodies that guy has worn <laughs> that he has no idea that he's wearing he's never worn a hoodie they just photoshop <laughs> The show is Googling uh, apparel for uh, obscure publishers now. <laughs> Sorry, Andy. All right, Kerpow. <laughs> Yay it's or fine. nay? It's good. It, it's it's a really cool, uh, uh, I think it's going to be a twist on like a Daredevil kind of character where they, they have a relationship with this kingpin, obviously. Mm-hmm. He's the son of this kingpin, but he feels the crushing guilt of seeing this uh this beloved batman character get killed in his own home okay. so so we're saying okay we're looking at the cover now red hoodie is that the sun i no this is i think supposed to be the robin character okay which the reflection of the, yeah exactly okay. all right so kerpow was cool it's worth a check out if you're into like crime and not psychological thrillers but i don't know Trauma stories? It seems to be a trauma story. Okay. But it's cool. Well done, Scout Comics. You're back on the map. <laughs> I was worried about you last week. American mythology might have the worst site on the internet. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. What the <laughs> hell? Is that Geosites? <laughs> it does look like a free Geosites. They have the Three Stooges IP? <laughs> yeah. Because wow. nobody else wants it. Wow. Uh, too good. No clothes, though. No missed Man. opportunity. American Real mythology. missed opportunity. Dang. Lame. I wanted a, a Robin Hood hood. Oh, Pink Panther stuff, too. Oh, thank God. I've been wondering where I could get my Pink Panther uh, <laughs> comic books. God. There you but go. I you can get only the trade imagine. for five bucks. I can only imagine. Okay. Well, that was an episode. We read comics. We talked about them. You will go read them and report back on what you thought about them. Um... Let us know the quality of your dead samurai t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember, those are a poly blend, so wash cold and dry flat. Yep. Other than that, check out all our socials. Go to a Patreon. 
We got a free section and a pay section. We got a YouTube. We got everything. I got an upset tummy. Mike D, lead us out. Bye. First Issue Club Podcast is brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company. The people responsible for our favorite drinks, the Space Camper Cosmic IPA family of beers. Our show is edited and produced by our hosts, Mike DeStacy, Greg Licktig, and Andy Vargas. You can find us on social media at First Issue Club, and you can join the supporters who keep our humble podcast going on our Patreon at patreon.com slash first issue club.